Hey everybody and welcome. Today we are here in Huntsville, Alabama, getting ready to take you guys along with us to U.S. Space and Rocket Center. U.S. Space and Rocket Center. And this rocket is just massive. It's hard to really grasp just how large it is, but you can kind of get a perspective with the trees down below, but it is huge. You can see it from miles and miles away. Snoopy is the mascot of the Space Flight Awareness Program. So not only does he represent Kings Island, but he also represents NASA. So here are some spacesuits through time. You can see here is the shuttle ejection escape suit. Right here is the Apollo commander suit that you would see on the Apollo missions. Over here, we have the Gemini spacecraft. So we're really going back in time here. And going further back in time, the Mercury spacesuits. They have hair boots. And that's the most important hair boots. So interestingly enough, this is the Boeing Starliner. This is a replica right here. And this is the spacecraft that as of the as of this recording is actually stuck in space. It was supposed to already be back to Earth, but now they're anticipating that they may not come back down to Earth until February of 2025. So there are two crew members on this currently in space right now. But this is the Boeing Starliner. They look like the size of King Kong and Godzilla. It really does. This is the Saturn I rocket right here. And this is really neat right here. This is like a replica of the lunar module. And I guess this is supposed to replicate the moon here. So we are underneath the external fuel tank and right here are the solid rocket boosters of a space shuttle. So this is the space shuttle Pathfinder. The Pathfinder was a testing simulator for astronauts flying the space shuttle. I'm pretty sure 90 people can fit in there. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> so what happened though, most of the people gentry were in the front and back here, this was like the cargo bay. So this would open up for cargo, for their missions and other things that they would have to, satellites and other things that they would transport to space. All right. So this replicates the International Space Station that we're in right now. And here are some of the foods that they consume as well as their drinks. Some grape drink. Right here is some spaghetti with meat sauce, space spaghetti. Some first aid items that they have while on board collapsible food containers. It looked like just the typical GLAD food containers. And right here is the restroom for the International Space Station. The Orbital Outhouse. And here's your own little private room. Right there is the blanket that you would attach yourself in to go to sleep at night. And here's a workstation. This looks like Daddy. Halo or something, right? Look, Daddy. Oh, that's awesome. Here's a little hatch up here where it looks like you're actually orbiting around the Earth. So this is really cool. The engine to Blue Origins BE3U were produced right here in Huntsville, Alabama. And here's one of those engines. You can see it's autographed by all the engineers. So they're 
creating enough wattage to make some lights over here. Keep going. Awesome space jacket on here. Well, like it's, let's take a look at some other things that they got. They got hats, shirts, water bottles. Over here are some more hats. Let's see how much the hats are running. $35. It's a pretty expensive hat. They even have a space shuttle playset here, and the space shuttle playset is $18.95. So as we're leaving here, it is pouring down rain, and we were looking for space ice cream when Jennifer was younger. She was here, right? You, you, about 30-something years ago. 30-some <laughs> years ago, you were here, and tell us about space ice cream. Um, I never got to try it, but, um, but I remember some kids in my class had, had brought extra, like, money along and stuff like that and they uh, tried it and it was kind of a cool thing I think it's just like freeze-dried yeah just freeze-dried yeah. they but they don't sell it here they said that they're completely out right now so we promised the boys we'd get some man it's really coming down now but they said it vendors. yeah Cabela's they have to and change different vendors all the time so they do have it sometimes and today they don't so and they say Cabela's and REI sells it so we may stop by there at some point and try the freeze-dried ice cream so it is the next day. We're here at REI and look what we found. Space ice cream. And this one right here is Neapolitan. And that over there is mint chocolate chip. And I think they're gonna go in the back here and try to find some vanilla. Henry and I are gonna get, well, where did Henry go? There's Henry, <laughs> he's wandering. So never been in REI before, I don't believe. But yeah, a lot of things for camping. If you don't know where the camping stuff is, it's right here. <laughs> You're gonna you find it right here. Right here, right here yeah. at REI, right? Yeah, but you have to walk to the like, camping section. If you need ice cream, there's actually ice cream flavors here, but you have to get the ice cream. So Henry and I both got the <laughs> vanilla. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's super cool. And look at this, we have found Wilson. Kimberly Jones, oh, sorry. it's good to hear from y'all. John Green. Oh, <laughs> oh is it coming? Cheryl Ann. Yeah. Just to kind of show you. I showed him. Oh, did you? I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't see you. All right, everybody, we are fast forwarding into the future since we had a pretty good rainfall. We have delayed our outro for this since we wanted to eat some space ice cream and try that out and kind of uh, get our take on it. But as far as the space and rocket center, Henry, what are your thoughts on the space and rocket center? Good. Um, so, uh, they did have ice cream because the way ice cream. She was um, somewhere, she was very far away. So uh, we gotta get ice, space ice cream. So um, instead we just um, got this no ice cream. So, um, and um, I want to be an astronaut for Halloween because that would be cool. So I'm gonna be an astronaut for Halloween because astronauts, they have helmets and suits on them and they have a glass on the helmet that puts it down and up. So you can do stuff. And um, that's super cool. So I'm going to be that for Halloween. All right. So, so inspired by the United States Space and Rocket Center that you now have an ambition to be an astronaut for trick or treat time, right? Mm, I'm going to get a lot of candy for that. <laughs> <laughs> And Gentry. Um, I really liked it. Um, all the models and even um, there's rides there. Um, play stuff there. That was really fun. Um, 
They even had this ride, uh, it wasn't really a ride, but it was this bench that you would sit on and it had like this um, earthquake kind of thing and you can turn it up to different levels, three different levels. Uh, that was fun and all, the, all in all I just think that it's a really cool place and if you want to go there and see some space stuff, you should definitely go. Awesome. And Jennifer. Yeah, this is a, a really great place. Um, there's a lot more rockets and, and things to look at than there was back when I was little, 30-something years ago, and went on a school field trip. Um, so definitely a great family place to go to and explore, especially if you have um, children who are interested in space. And then Brent and I, we've always had an interest since we were little in, uh, in things like that and rockets and all. And it's just so neat. Um, I think that one of the really cool things that you uh, that we did that was was really fascinating was when we actually walked through um, what a, a real space shuttle is like um, a space station sorry um, and then they had the monitors up there showing uh, next to each each station what it actually did and like how they actually utilized it and everything in space when they're up at the International Space Station so I thought that was really cool and then the MREs like the boys really thought that was so neat to see what they actually eat and drink in space and then um, we got to see some videos of some rockets taking off and actual rockets there too and, and models of rockets when we were there larger than life and then when the boys got to actually walk through what looked like you know the moon and craters in there so that they could actually visually see and and do and feel you know all of the different things um, it's just such a neat experience and i have to agree it was really awesome to allow our family to go to this experience to be able to see what goes into our awesome space pro program and uh, how the astronauts and cosmonauts have collectively built the international space station and we are actually getting ready to watch a um, SpaceX uh, space launch in October. And so as long as that launch does not get scrubbed, we will actually be able to uh, watch a rocket launch. And so I think it was really beneficial for us to go to this today just to kind of see the inner workings and the engineering aspects of our space program here in the United States and, and how far collectively we have come along just in the really and truly like the, la the last 50, 60 years, just the tremendous changes that have uh, come into effect with our uh, space program and the trajectory moving forward into the future of the things that are yet still yet to come, which is very reassuring and, and, and very awesome to say the least. Uh, but guys, we thank you so much for joining us here in Huntsville, Alabama at the United States Space and Rocket Center. We sure to look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Every Day is Saturday. Woo!